you toothsome people. The Sport Like It Is Mobile has rolled into four ways today at Pete's house. My name is Ed and I've brought with me one tidy gentleman. It is the future, Richard Masper. How's it? How's it going? Well, thanks and yourself. Good, thank you. A little disappointed in the weather. We were promised glorious sunset and, well, we've got a glorious thunderstorm that's on its way fairly soon. South Africa, 266 all out. 20 minutes ago, it was all looking so beautiful and glorious, but uh, a few wickets after tea and uh, it's not looking so good now. Yeah, falling apart a bit. Uh shaky shaky afternoon session for them and as you said they were coasting at one point looked to be going in at a, a good rate starts. and you know Ashwell Prince, A.B. De Villiers all looking fantastic but just from there on in went went backwards horribly. Quick mensch for Jacques Callas, 12,000 runs I think he's gone to third in the all-time list Dravid and Tendulka. Richard thinks Ricky Ponting's still ahead of him yeah, so not by much I think he's about 20 or 30 runs ahead of him I don't know Shane Watson injured, hamstring gone. Peter Siddle steps up to the plate and takes all these wickets towards the end. Is that a massive loss? I think that Shane Watson at the moment is Australia's best player, certainly the most dangerous if you look at his all-round ability. He's exactly like Jacques Callas. He's that sort of bowler. He's going to come on, he's going to give you a couple of wickets and uh, he's always going to look like getting a wicket and I think that's the most important thing for Australia at the moment. They're struggling, they don't have strike bowlers. Mitchell Johnson is Absolutely rubbish. Um, he's been useless. Wow. Lion, a, a spinner, untested. Um, Siddle, as you say, looks a, a good enough prospect. Uh, Cummins and you guys come in as and Nathan yeah, Lyon looks like untried. he can turn his arm over, but again, he's not really going to offer you much variation, particularly on our pitches, which are, of course, flat as anything yeah. else. This one on day three, and this is why I'm so disappointed, is that South Africa have thrown it away, 266 all out. Australia, if they back tomorrow and get into day three, they're going to make a huge total. Yeah, they're I think properly. day three is probably going to be the best of, uh, of the innings, the best of the pitch to bat on. Um, but looking a bit further ahead, I mean, there is talk of rain on, on Monday, there is talk of rain on Sunday as well. So I, I don't know, you know, a lot of people that I've spoken to have said, score draw, you know, high scores, not going to get a result out of this test match, but South Africa maybe opened the door here with a relatively mediocre first innings total. Michael Hussey, quick mention for him, proving that his moniker, Mr. Cricket, is quite appropriate. He bowled four overs today, two and a half, you know, just comes in, steams in, heading up to the stumps, looking really slick. Well, he's, done, he's done the job in ODIs before, so, you know, it's... Uh not a lot that he can Mr. Cricket, and, and quite appropriate, it. isn't it? Yeah. You said to me just before we came on that you think Ricky Ponting's had it and you think Mitchell Johnson's had it. Are those two guys that can be replaced? Yes, I think so. Um, Usman Khawaja's come into the side now. He looks um, like quite a good player. He is a fairly solid player. Favours batting at number three. So I think as a long-term solution, that's the guy that they're definitely looking at. Ricky Ponting, though, is done and dusted. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Our supporters picked up that we're running short on beers, so... Nice we'll getting, waste a few seconds nice getting served like this um, but no I, I think those are the two guys who, who literally scream out at the moment to be replaced I mean Mitchell Johnson the Newlands test everybody's picking up but he doesn't tour him. well does he no he doesn't and, and let's be fair what has he done since he burst onto the scene I mean he was devastating when he arrived on the scene but since then but you, can, you can always back him in Australia because I think he's, he's, you know, people use the word rhythm bowler, which I think is the most rubbish term. They get into a rhythm and they bowl well, which I think most bowlers do. But I think at home he's devastating and maybe he just doesn't enjoy the travel, like, much like Dennis Burkhardt didn't used to like traveling. But anyway. <laughs> well, by plane anyway. <laughs> exactly. New Zealand going to Australia next. And we're assuming that perhaps South Africa could wrap this one up. They might not, of course, with that shocking first innings total. They've got New Zealand coming. New Zealand will fancy themselves in Australia now. First test in the Gabba in a couple of weeks' time. Do you think that they've got a chance? I don't think of beating Australia, no. I think they've got a good chance of putting in a good showing. Um, I think they're going to push Australia a lot of the way. But Australia at home are a different kettle of fish. You mentioned touring now. Um, they don't play as well as they do Oh, away they, from come home. on, they went to Zimbabwe and won. I mean, geez, give them a break. Yeah, I mean, these are, these are tours that are, are not really testing them. <laughs> I think New Zealand at home will give them a good run for their money, but... I just cannot, my head cannot get around the fact that New Zealand could beat Australia at home in a test series. I, I just cannot understand that. I thought I'd like to leave the last words to Alan Donald today, who said, The guys went out and did something special at Newlands. To be at the forefront of something extremely special and to beat Australia in South Africa would be the pinnacle. Interesting comments. We haven't beaten them at home since readmission. I can't believe that. Yeah, there were a couple of interesting comments as well that he said about, um, you know, people would look at the Newlands test and say, Wow, what a bowling coach. And uh, <laughs> I just thought, well, that's fairly modest of you. And actually, it's uh, a lot to do with the wicket and what the bowlers are doing. But, you know, that's besides the point. He had a couple of quirky quotes in the media this week. 
for once. Alan Donald stealing the show. Stay delish, stay in touch, sport like it is, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll reconvene next week. Thanks for watching. Cheers.